Hi, this is Gary Rubenstein, and today I want to show you about a uh, type of math that was developed by uh, Rene Descartes in uh, about 1650. And it's related to what we learn in algebra uh, nowadays, but to a much uh, deeper and I think more interesting level. So early on in algebra, maybe in ninth grade, you learn how to uh, how to plot lines on a graph, solution sets of linear equations. Soon after you learn how to do that, you learn that you can solve a system of equations, for instance, this one, 2x plus y equals 9, x minus 2y equals 2. You can solve a system of equations by converting it into, uh, converting both equations into slope-intercept form by graphing the two graphs and by looking and locating the intersection point, which in this case is the point 4, 1. Now, you have to hope that these work out nicely and that the answers become integers, but you are shown that you can solve algebra equations through graphing. When you do this, it's known as geometrically constructing the roots of algebraic equations. And this is a subject that has a rich history. Uh, later on in math, you learn that you can solve quadratic equations. For instance, um, the equation x squared minus uh, x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals 0. And you learn that you could do it by graphing the parabola and looking at the two uh, x-intercepts and seeing that <coughs> it intercepts at x equals 2 and x equals 4. But if you're doing this by hand and without a, a graphing calculator, this approach wouldn't be that practical since the work you have to do to create the graph, namely finding the roots of the equation in order to create the graph, um, you would need to actually create the graph because you've already found the roots, so it would be kind of um, kind of unnecessary. Well, Descartes in the 1600s explored this type of question, and his goal was to have you uh, construct and locate x uh, locate points that solve the algebraic equation using the simplest possible curves. So. If the only way you can do this equation is by plotting the parabola, intersecting it with the x-axis, and that was the simplest way, that's the way we'd have to do it. But Descartes figured out another way to do uh, these questions, and th this one relies on just graphing a certain circle with a certain horizontal line. In this case, he figured out that if you were to graph this circle, the circle with center 3, 0, and that has radius 3, together with the uh, horizontal line y equals square root of 8. This circle and this line intersect, the x-coordinates of the intersections are also 2 and 4, and they solve the same equation. I'm going to show you why. If you take the equation x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals 0, and we take as the horizontal line y equals the square root of 8, or in general, uh, the square root of whatever the, uh, the c value is. And then you make your equation x minus 3 squared, where the minus 3 is half of the minus uh, 6, the b term, plus y squared equals 3 squared, which is 9. Look what ends up happening. When you multiply this out, this becomes x squared minus 6x. That's good because that's the minus 6x that we want here. We have this plus 9 here that we don't want. But since y is equal to the square root of 8 is the other equation, um, we, have this, we have this plus 8 here. So we really just want to get rid of this 9, and we do that by putting a 9 here. And that's where our equation, x minus 3 squared plus y squared equals 3 squared comes from. That circle 
together with this line will solve our equation as was done over here. And in general, you could solve quadratic equations of the form x squared plus px plus q equals 0 by intersecting the horizontal line y equals square root of q with the circle x plus p over 2 squared plus y squared equals 0. Much later in Descartes' book, he shows how powerful this process is. You see, at this point, it still doesn't seem like a very necessary process since we have the quadratic formula. So even though a circle in a horizontal line is easier than a parabola in a horizontal line, still neither is as good as just using the quadratic formula. But what if we find an algebra problem that we don't know how to solve? We don't have a formula for, or there is no formula, or we just don't know it. For instance, what if it is a fourth degree equation, x to the fourth, minus 15x squared plus 10x plus 24 equals 0. Now this is known as depressed quartic equation since there's no uh, x to the third term. And I'm going to show you how Descartes came up with the process for solving any equation of this type by intersecting a parabola with a circle. And here's, here's the, the process. First of all, the parabola is going to be y equals x squared. Now, he's going to rewrite the original equation as x to the fourth plus x squared minus 16x squared. That's, that's equivalent to negative 15x squared. You'll see why he's doing this in a, in a moment. Uh, plus 10x plus 24 equals 0. Now since y equals x squared, y squared equals x to the fourth. And this 16x squared can be written as minus 16y. I'll leave the 10x alone and I'll bring the 24 over to the other side. Now we can do completing the square. x squared plus 10x is uh, I was right, x squared plus 10x, we need to add 25 to this, to complete this square, plus y squared minus 16y plus 64. And on this other side, I also have to add, I also have to add the, uh, the 25 and the 64. And we end up with the equation for the circle, which is x plus 5 squared, plus y minus 8 squared equals 65. And if we graph this circle with this parabola, we're going to get things that intersect at the solution. As you'll see on this next page, here's the parabola, y equals x squared. Here's the circle. And as you can see, they intersect in four, uh, in four spots. And uh, those four spots do correspond to the actual four uh, solutions to this equation, which is uh, negative four is over here, negative one is over here, two is here, and three is here. Incidentally, if I were to just graph the original equation, it would look like that. And as you can see, these four x-intercepts correspond with the four places where the circle intersects the parabola. This process also works for uh, depressed cubics. That's something like x cubed minus 5x plus 2 equals 0. The trick then is to multiply everything through by x, and you end up with a depressed quartic with, uh, with no constant term. And as you can see, when I put that one, uh, when I graph that one, <clears throat> I end up with four intersection points. These two are real close together. One of them is at 0, 0. We ignore that one, and we can solve the depressed cubics that way also. If the cubics or quartics have all the terms and are not depressed, then there's some converters. You can see my other tutorials for that.